I would like to show you a brilliant attacking game of Akiba Rubinstein. He carried out a pawn storm on his opponent's kingside in a very instructive way, increasing the effect of the storm with unexpected peace sacrifices. Rubinstein started with d4 and his opponent Teichmann played d5. c4 e6, queen's gambit declined. Knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, knight d7, e3, bishop e7, knight f3, short castle, queen c2. Now the most energetic move for black is c5. Teichmann, however, opted for a less active continuation, b6. In order to fianchetto his light-squared bishop, take under control the e4 square and centralize his knight. And after the exchange on d5, Rubinstein develops his bishop, increasing the pressure on black's kingside. And after bishop b7, Rubinstein makes it clear that his plan is to start a pawn storm on the kingside. He castles queenside, moving his king to the queen side, and that means he can safely move his king side pawns. And black in his turn starts the active play on the queen side, c5. Rubinstein starts the pawn storm, h4, and black plays c4, advancing the pawn with tempo, attacking the bishop. Black's pawn, black's plan is to start a pawn storm on the queen side in his turn, after uh, reinforcing and stabilizing in the center. However, Rubinstein's energetic play, extremely energetic play, shows that uh, this plan is too slow and black pawn wouldn't be able to move even to b5, let alone to b4. That's why instead of c4 it would have been better to keep the tension in the center and develop one of the rooks instead, either rook c8 or rook e8. Instead, however, black played c4. Now, the bishop is under attack, that's why bishop f5 followed and rook e8. So black uh, takes under control the e4 square. R right at the moment, knight e4 is impossible because the white bishop, the white knight and the queen controls the e4 square and black would simply lose a pawn if the knight jumps on e4. But after rook e8, the knight can jump on e4. Besides that, after rook moved to e8, the f8 square is vacated for the knight and the knight would be ideally placed on f8. It would be the ideal defensive Peace, defending the h7. However, Rubinstein prevents this. He captures on f6. And now black must capture on f6 with the knight. Because otherwise white will simply capture on h7. And that means the knight won't be able to jump to f8. Knight takes f6 and Rubinstein continues his energetic play. g4, threatening g5 of course. So if black plays g6... At first sight, it might look that the bishop is trapped. However, white can simply play g5, attacking the uh, knight and opening the retreating squares for his bishop. And uh, if the knight moves to uh, h5, for example, the bishop can move to g4, attacking the knight. And if black captures the bishop, of course, white will capture the knight and the g file is, will open and that would be simply terrible for black. That's why after g4, as uh, g5 is coming, black played bishop d6, opening the rook's way. Now, after g5, the knight can jump on e4 because uh, black pieces also control the e4 square three times. And Rubinstein continues his energetic pawn storm, h5, leaving the g5 pawn unguarded. It's defended only once, but black is attacking it two times. However, it turns out that black cannot capture the pawn, of course, because after knight takes g5, black would voluntarily open the g file for the white rook. Besides that, the knight on e4 was closing the queen's diagonal. And now that it moved to g5, of course, both the bishop and the queen are attacking the h7 pawn. So after the exchange on g5, white would simply capture on h7. The king side would be completely demolished and the g file would be open. So in this case, black's position would have immediately collapsed. That's why after h5, black, of course, didn't capture on g5 and instead played queen e7. Rubinstein makes his last preparations. Rook g1. Now both rooks are ready to the opening of the files on the king side. And black should have played here g6 in order to keep at least the g file uh, closed. Of course, white's position still would be better, but black could have tried to continue the resistance. Instead of this, instead of g6, black plays a6 still thinking about his own pawn storm on the queen side. So after a6, 
Well, black took under control the b5 square and now black is going to move his b pawn. However, Rubinstein starts a deadly attack. You can pause the video and try to find the most energetic way to uh, continue the attack and to open the files on the king side as soon as possible. So black is going to play b5 and b4 might be very unpleasant. That's why it's necessary to open the files very fast. And in order to achieve this, Rubinstein sacrifices the bishop. Bishop takes h7 check. And after king takes h7, g6 check. Now the files for the rooks will open. And the black pawn is still on b6. So if black captures on g6, then simply knight takes e4. Black cannot capture with the queen because of the fork, of course. That's why black must capture with a pawn, but after d takes e, simply knight g5 check would follow. And in case the king moves to g8, of course, queen takes c4 check, and uh, black must give up the queen, because otherwise if the king moves to f8, then simply checkmate on h7, and if to h8, of course, the king would stand right under the attack, white would simply capture on g6, open the h file, and checkmate. And that's why after knight g5 check, black must move to h6, but that isn't better because of knight f7 check. Now, if the king retreats, then simply h takes g check, followed by checkmate would have followed. And if after knight f7 check, black captures the knight, then of course, after h takes g, check and the king simply doesn't have any squares to move that's why after g6 check black cannot capture the pawn so the king retreats to g8 now rubinstein captures on e4 and after d takes e his knight is under attack rubinstein has already sacrificed one piece and now he leaves his knight under attack he ignores this threat and continues his energetic pawn storm. He must open the files as soon as possible. h6. Now the both files, the g file and the h file, will open. It turns out that black actually cannot accept the sacrifice. After e takes f, white would have simply captured on f7, opening the g file, and now if the king captures, then simply queen g6 check and h takes g with a deadly threat rook h8 checkmate and if the queen captures then simply h takes g threatening checkmate on h8 checkmate on h7 black must capture the pawn but that doesn't help because of queen h7 check black cannot capture because the queen is pinned and that means black would lose the queen and would be checkmated that's why after h6 black played f6 in order to keep the g file uh, closed at least but the h file opens of course h takes g so now there is nothing black can do to prevent the invasion on the h file either to uh, h8 or h7 so that will unavoidably follow that's why black at least accepts the sacrifice of the second piece so black is two pieces up however white rooks have developed the enormous activity the files are open and the king is the target of attack and black rooks aren't really doing anything. So, of course, the invasion of the, on the h file followed. Rook h8 check. And after king uh, g7, rook h7 check. King g8. Of course, white could have captured the queen. White would be absolutely winning. But Rubinstein found even stronger move. Queen f5, bringing the queen into the attack. So... Black actually doesn't have time to save the queen because white is going to play queen h5. By playing queen f5, Rubinstein has created a deadly threat. After queen h5, rook h8 check followed by checkmate on h6 or on h7 would follow. That's why black doesn't have time to save the queen. Black's position is absolutely lost. Black made a desperate move. C3, as there is nothing else black can do. And, uh, of course, now Rubinstein captured the queen. And here black resigned because after bishop takes e7, simply queen e6 check would have followed. And black king would be checkmated. And after, uh, after rook takes e7, simply now queen takes f6 is possible, attacking the bishop. 
threatening, attacking the h8, and if black plays rook d8, for example, to defend the bishop, simply rook h1 would follow, creating deadly threats on h8, and black is losing. And now I recommend watching another brilliant game by Rubinstein, in which he defeated the future world champion Alexander Alochin by violating one of the principles of positional chess. But first, like this video and subscribe, as it's really helpful for the channel growth.